<laughs> triggered. Triggered like a bitch I am. <laughs> Reaction streamer. Watch more videos, retard. Yeah. Uh, I saw this one. I had this one recommended on Twitter. Uh, watch the Chris Chan documentary. Do you guys know who Chris Chan is? No idea. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll watch then. He it's a it's a story of and I don't know all the details. I've never watched this, but it's a story of of sadness and also uh being yes, Sonichu. Sonichu, you know. It's disturbing, it's sad, it's weird. If it gets too sad, we'll we'll stop cuz I'm not trying to bring downers in, you know, on a nice Saturday afternoon. Uh so yeah, we'll watch this and then I think I'm going to I'll think. I don't know if I want to play Red Dead or if I want to play Bully. Probably Bully tonight, but we'll see. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, and dudes of all teenagers, as well as the uh, gals. My name is Christian Chandler. I am here, and y'all are there. <laughs> this message is for everyone of the present and the future beyond this date. February 24th, 2007. My birthday. My 25th birthday. I am high functioning. 25th. Autistic, and in my 25 years, I have seen and learned so much. And today, I shared, intended to share some wise words that I hope each and every one of you will take to heart and allow for yourself and everyone else a better prior future. First off... Meet Kristen Weston Chandler. He is a high-functioning autistic wonder of the internet known for his countless anti-social episodes and traumatic events in his life. It's my fault! I want everything about my house off the internet! From public outbursts... To assault of property and people. He maces people at GameStop. These events have eaten away at his very sanity. Who is Chris, you ask? What did he do and why? My name is Christian Weston Chandler. I'm here to find happiness with my true sweetheart who I've known for over two months now. All these questions will be answered tonight. An update to my loyal fans on the internet through the YouTube. We will delve into the mind of Christian, showing his rise and fall of fame. The misfortunes that unfold over time will break his thin grasp on reality. And you know, I'm looking you know, forward to the eventuality of uh, you and me having our sex time together. <laughs> we will learn the secrets of this phenomenon that has swept the internet for almost a decade. The incredible detail that people have gone into to observe him and write about him. There's more about Chris Chan than like George Washington or someone like <laughs> There's so much See? information out about him. Starting from the very beginning. So I did a of cartoon and I listened to what song it says at the end of it. All the way up to current events. We're told the fire started in a first floor bathroom but got quickly Jesus out of control Christ. and eventually shot through the roof. <laughs> Me in 10 years, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's dummy thick. <laughs> Me in 10 weeks. Hey, I'm losing weight, man. Kristen Weston Chandler is an amazing sight to see for some. And for others, he is a tragedy that is too sad to laugh at. Well, I'm here to tell you about him. Understanding Chris and the following he has behind him is not an easy feat. Christian is currently 32 years old and has managed to become an internet sensation. We will briefly go over most of the stories because simply there is too much to tell. Before you watch any of Christian's videos, you must understand who he is. Christian has been famous for a while, sparking a wave of trolls trying to bully or harass him. Because of the way he acts, people want to poke fun at him constantly for his childlike brain and arguably odd mannerisms. Arguably. But the trolls have their own reasons, which is what we will talk about. I am not here to justify any of the bad things that happened to Chris or justify the backlashes Chris dishes out to the trolls. But I will show you unbiased facts and information about Chris 
Yes, I'm here for unbiased your facts. Own opinion on Chris, so you can decide what and who deserves punishment, if any. I want you to understand both sides, but most importantly, I want you to enjoy everything you see. When's he going to talk about the Sonic Shoe Medallion? Can spark emotion, no matter if it's anger, sadness, or happiness. It is not right to laugh at someone when they are unable to help themselves. In other words, when Chris is jumping around like an idiot out of joy, laugh at him and with him. When he is angry, understand the situation. When he is sad, put yourself in his shoes without pity or any empathy. That being said, I don't condone any of these events, nor do I have any part in them. Enjoy the wonderfully weird life of Christian Weston Chandler. No, oh, my Corsair keyboard is totally broken. Because I spilled water on it during PKA it like a retard. It is 5.30 a.m. in Charlottesville, Virginia. The date is February 24th, 1982. Christopher Weston Chandler, his current legal name at the time, was born from Robert and Barbara Chandler. Not much is known about Christian's childhood, except that he was pretty much a normal kid. Both yeah, I'll his turn parents it up. loved him and tried their best to shelter him from the outside world, all while making sure he was safe and happy. Damn, young kid, and he's my already vaping. And my father are both really nice, old-fashioned type people who not only gave the birth, gave me birth at their ages, which my mother is 66 currently, and my father is currently 80. They both just turned that way in the last couple of months. And uh, I was born in 1982. They gave me the birth then, and uh, anyway, they were so nice of them for them to give me the uh, birth during the early 1980s. I was diagnosed with high functional autism and I lived a uh, somewhat rough life. I've had an abusive babysitter at one time. Christian's symptoms of autism did not occur until he was of two. An abusive babysitter, that's unironically the very, of a very sad. Incident. One time while Christian's parents were out on the town, Chris was left with a babysitter to make sure he was safe. Three year old little Chris wanted to go tell his babysitter something, but she was on the phone. Chris approached her and interrupted the phone call. Making the babysitter enraged, she grabbed Chris, dragged him to his room, and locked him inside with his toys. He sat there alone, crying. This episode was so traumatic for Chris, he would refuse to speak for six years. Because of this, Christian had to attend James Madison University for speech therapy. And oh, this is going to be sadder children. than I thought it would be, isn't it? And some of the teachers and principals of Nathaniel Green Elementary School, and I was attending in later years, about uh, late 1980s, early 1990s. They abused me, they abused me by pinning me to the ground with, uh, their hand, with uh, holding my wrists and my ankles, pinning me down the ground and, and audio taping my cries and shouts. But anyway, my mother and my father, they both bought the court system, the Green County court system, which uh, they were not a very nice bunch of people, very not, hands down. 1991. Chris was switched into Nathaniel Green Elementary School. But after a few incidents <laughs> with the teachers hinting towards abuse, Christian's family would take the school to court and fight the system. The Chandler family would end up losing, and the school board wanted Chris put into a special needs school or an institution. Christian's father, Bob, had an old-fashioned way of thinking, and he imagines that psychology and special needs have not gone past lobotomies and straitjackets. Because of fears that Chris would be institutionalized, in September, the Chandler family moves to Cloverleaf Lakes Apartments in Chesterfield County, Virginia. Although they keep their home in Rutgersville, Chris would be homeschooled from now on for an entire year. Leonard Bearstein. Uh, misspelled, I assume. The year is 1992. Christian is 10 years old, and he meets Leonard Bearstein. Leonard is an animatronic bear that is set up at the local Regency Square shopping mall every year around Christmas. Leonard has a band of animatronic bears to sing along with him. The bear is designed to interact with the audience <laughs> via a human operator behind the curtains. Due to the small crowd at the mall, Chris got a lot of attention from Leonard. Leonard asked Chris his name, and Chris replied, Christopher. The bear misheard him as saying Christian. Chris saw this as a name he should hold on to, and later got it legally changed to Christian Weston Chandler. <laughs> this is a very important event in Christian's life, and he sees it as something sacred. Because of an animatronic bear mishearing him, that's great. 
The Avengers of Sonic the Hedgehog, the cool new TV show, is on the air. And check this out, it's the KB Toy Stores Watch and Win Sweepstakes. All you gotta do is watch the show, and then write down the Sonic Says message. For entry blank, go to a participating KB Toy Store, or use a free... Oh, remember KB Toys? To KB Toys was awesome. Some of this cool Sonic stuff. Prizes may vary. There's even a thousand dollar shopping spree at KB Toy Stores. The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and KB Toy Stores watching one sweepstakes. Yeah, he's the Sonic the kid. The Sonic Chew. Remember Sonic, Sonic Chew? Sonic the Hedgehog is running wildly in the Chandler household this weekend. Twelve year old Christian Chandler of Charlottesville was the winner. You're 25 and you don't remember KB Toys? I'm 29 spree. and I remember Christian going in all the time. Christian about hundred winners nationally to receive one thousand dollars worth of Sega games and equipment. For his parents, it's just another example of how well he's doing. Christian is a high-functioning autistic child. This past fall, on his own initiative, he entered a contest based on a favorite cartoon character. What I had to do was exactly what side the Hedgehog a cartoon, and I'd listen to what side says at the end of it, and write it down for a whole week, and then I had to mail it in, and I had to be drawn out of a hat, and I just won. Oh, a little kid all happy about winning the Sonic contest. Touching. Very touching. You're 26. You've never heard of KB Toys. Are you from you the know, U.S.? We work with kids that have troubles interacting with other people. Sometimes we try to really force that, and we not not force it. We try to help them learn how to interact with others and try to create some relationships and have try to have them more normalized. That's a horrible way to say it, but a more normal way of interacting with other people. <laughs> Maybe it's a Midwest thing. I don't fucking know. Well, yeah, but Toys R Us was a whole store. KB Toys was like Christian a store inside a mall. This is when he recalls the best years of his life. This is the year he attended Manchester High School. Christian had made some good progress and was able to function up to par with the rest of the students in his grade. I would be talking about, to this young man, Chris, my, my, my tact with him would probably be what do you want to do after high school? What are the things you enjoy doing and like to do? So we can try to help find a way for him to be able to pursue those things so he could have happiness. Because really that's what all of us want in our lives is happiness. Doing things that make us feel good, relationships hopefully. Uh, but with an autism student, that, that, that's a whole different thing when you're talking about relationships. He does look like an ugly John Stewart. At age 16, Chris starts his video making career with the reading of a poem for his English class titled The Song of Christian. Although this isn't his first appearance in media, it is the first video produced by him. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Christian Chandler Show. Good evening friends, and welcome to the Christian Chandler Show. I am your host, Christian Chandler. Now tonight we are going to talk about poetry. And Dude, I'd rather get a video in the mail from that puppet on the tricycle from Saw than this. A line in the behind the scenes of the, of the lines. And I'm going to express my feelings a little bit, so please don't lay up. I feel, I'll feel embarrassed. Okay, anyway. My poem is called, entitled, The Song of Christian. And I just did it last night on May 14th, 1998. I'm going to do my poem now, so here it goes. I hear America singing as I sing of myself, and you experience as I experience. The problems of yourself are my problems. The youth of the young singing cries of happiness. The children's song, the song of laughter. At age six weeks, I sang the song of laughter. And you can't rhyme laughter with laughter, F. At age, the Lord clicked the mute button on me. That was my parents' song. They pulled me through the talk again at age seven. I now, 16 years old, and I'm going to talk about to hope to achieve new goals and Mario Raceway records and to finish my homemade Nintendo Power magazine. The magazine songs. The Ballad of Sight the Hedgehog on Game Is this Boy. still the poem? The rudeness of the teenager saw the despicable mention of rude words and D-R-U-G-S. I'm not afraid to speak despise the hazardous flukes in, in America's song. My song that I sing, although I talk well, 
my peer relationship is low, and my loneliness is off the scale. Anyway, that's my poem. Anyway, that's my... Dude, if you have a well, poem and it doesn't rhyme, it's not a poem. Now, I'll probably be interested in this next report. Now, if you don't, you can learn about a craze that's been sweeping the nation. While in high school, Chris becomes a major fan of the Japanese video game series, Pokemon. During this time, not only playing the card game, but he would produce Pokemon themed I mean, I was in grade school, but I was also a big fan. Local news, spotted wearing a costume of the main character in Pokemon. In 98, I was like, what, second grade? Like so many other fans, it got started with a kids' TV show. And now Pokemon is a marketing phenomenon. Kids and parents line up every Saturday at this Chesterfield County bookstore, and they dig deep. How much did all this cost? $30 with a discount. Then the games begin with... Third grade? I guess third grade. I don't fucking know. How do you play the game? Uh, I can't explain it. It's too long. I'll switch. I'll put out my Dragonair, even though it has 60 damage on it. Oh, boy. I never learned how to actually play the Pokemon card game, I just collected them. First game I learned how to really play was Lord of the Rings card game, and then after that it was obviously magic. It is prom night at Manchester High. Christian brought his mother to the prom, and he was dressed arguably the nicest he's ever been. Chris <laughs> even got <laughs> Underhanded to dig. one of his female friends, Tiffany Robinson. Tiffany was one of many gal pals that Christian knew during high school. They were a group of girls that took Christian under their wing. In leaked emails by some of the gal pals themselves, they went on to state that they in fact let Chris hang out with them out of pity and not a genuine liking of Christian. A lot of us were surprised, even shocked to see how much Christian had changed from the way we remembered him in high school. He was just this awkward, slightly odd, shy kid back then. A lot of the special ed kids got picked on, but for some reason, Christian seemed to get it much worse than the others. The others and I let Christian hang out with us mainly because we felt sorry for him. He sort of latched onto us, like he expected us to protect him. He was like Aww. a lost little boy. Sometimes I think he saw us as sort of mother figures, which seemed a little creepy yeah, now. Yeah, if, if they're trying to make the people feel bad, that it's like, oh, they just, they just hung out with him out of pity. It's like, well, what else did you want him to do? Like, the fact that they would include him in their activities, even though he's kind of a weirdo, like, that's pretty sweet. That's a very nice thing to do, so... Hopefully he's not framing it as these people are shitty, unless I don't know the rest of the story. It's like, it's nice of them to include him. But Christian seemed harmless enough back then, and we didn't mind him hanging out with us. As far as socializing goes, we didn't really hang out with him outside of school. White backgrounds in every fucking video. Birthday party. Christian's senior class was the year of 2000. He was 18 years old and ready to Ooh, graduate. Old Mr. Pib bottle. To be marked in infamy for Christian, Chris wanted so badly to win the art award for his clay models that he crafted exactly in like class. how Woody and Kyle exactly, include me in the podcast. He was awarded to someone else. He believed he deserved the award not for just his achievements in art, but because of his self-proclaimed accomplishment of coming out of his social shell. So distraught by the award, Christian did not shake anyone's hand or had any eye contact during graduation. Once all of the commotion was over, Christian ran away to a secluded area and cried to himself. And I had their life over there. I had, um, I had so many friends over there in high school. Oh. And I was just sad to leave when I had to graduate. Because I had to leave all my friends. That's really fucking sad. I had the good life, but we were forced to move back here. There is a kid like that in every high school. Anyway, after all that, I graduated. And they should graduated. still be treated kindly. And I moved back to uh, our old home. You have to empathize those, with those people. Yeah. Where I attended Piedmont Virginia Community College, and eventually I graduated from there too with a degree in computer drafting and design, also known as CAD CAM. In September, shortly after Christian's high school graduation, he attended Piedmont Virginia Community College, or PVCC for short. Chris briefly went to a marketing class due to influence from his father, but soon after switched into computer aided drafting and design. It took him five years to get his degree, 
but during those five years, Christian slowly got more and more lonely as he lost all of his friends in high school, and the students at PBCC did not want to put up with Chris's antics. This was the beginning of the love quest. I to like understand the music. Most of the stories we present oh, to you the about drawings this, are great. You must understand the love quest. Love quest is a term used by Chris to explain his everlasting journey to obtain a girlfriend. Chris believes that if he completes his love quest, all of his problems in life will be solved, and this will all be assured. If I need to get a Sonichu sub emote. The quest continues to this day. Everybody, that's human nature. People crave interactions with others, and I think as young men and women grow up, they have a need to be cared and loved for, and, and a need for a relationship. And after the stress from some of the people, people at PVCC, as well as my mental block of autism, it became hard for me to approach approach the girls like I used to. And I would like to point out right now at this at uh, during my ever since I ever, uh, during the whole my whole sweetheart search has started when I never sweetheart have search. stalked anybody. Never have stalked. I'm telling you right. I'm telling you right now. All I did was sit around with a sign by my side that said I was looking for a boyfriend free girl. Chris had an idea to complete the love quest. He went around public places on campus holding a sign reading, Seeking a cute 18 to 21 single female companion. 18 to 21 years of age, does not already have a boyfriend, average to slender weight slash body type, white, lives in Charlottesville or Rutgersville area, does not smoke or drink alcohol, happy, positive personality, average to high income, drives a vehicle. He, he clarifies that they have to be white. Oh, that is, that's too good. This is the attraction sign. <laughs> it was devised by Christian and has gotten him into trouble. <laughs> he's, he's pretty fucking picky. And banned from numerous stores. The word got out that a man was holding a sign around campus that said he was lonely, and it was alerted to the dean of PVCC, Mary Lee Walsh. She went down and confiscated the sign from Christian because of the disturbance it was making on campus. Chris saw this as an attack on his person and not a form of discipline. Soon after, Chris was at it again with a new attraction sign. Fed up with the situation, Mary called Chris into her office and gave him a stern talking to. Chris saw this as yet another attack and summoned a Cursey Hami Ha on Mary Lee Walsh. Cursey Hami Ha is a rude gesture that Chris made up himself. Taking She's a gotta be thin the anime, and not Ball smoke or drink and, and be white. The ultimate F you to the person who is unfortunate enough to get into its wake. Yeah, the pinnacle of choosing beggars. After being cursy hummy hawed, Mary realized that Chris was not in a stable mental condition, and he was banned from PBCC for one year and had to attend anger management <laughs> classes during his- <laughs> he, he got some they cursed her! Ah, oh, he used his wizardry! Suspension. Chris has marked this day in his memory as a day that his heart was crushed by the quote-unquote evil Mary Lee Walsh. After the anger classes, Chris returned and graduated from college. This was around the time Christian made Sonichu comics. Yes, let's get the Sonichu. Welcome to the world of Quickville, Virginia, and the world of Sonichu and Rose Chew. Anyway, I'm here today to talk to you about the revolutionary, revolutionary little character that will, that will make a lot of money because he's already been there and famous for about 20, for almost 10 years now. His name is Sonichu. <laughs> Sonichu is the magnum opus of Christian's life work, <laughs> a creation that he prides himself on more than any other achievement in his life. Yeah, yeah Sonichu, Sonichu copyright. Sonichu two popular franchises, Pokemon and Sonic. Chris was in a computer design class in 12th grade and had to make up a CD cover as a project, but the teacher insisted <laughs> on no copyrighted material. On March 17, 2000, Chris formed together the idea of Sonichu as a mix between a Pikachu and a Hedgehog. Thus, Sonichu in the world of Quickville was born. Ever since then, Chris has made countless Sonichu comics about, oddly enough, his life more than Sonichu himself, turning every person that has supposedly wronged Chris during his lifetime into a villain, such as Mary Lee Walsh. Although Christian gets criticized constantly for blatantly stealing ideas and plots from other shows and popular media, he continues to claim that Sonichu is his own original creation, and if told otherwise, he calls people out for being furthest thing from trolls. original. He wears a Sonichu medallion made out of Crayola Mono Magic. It is the symbol <laughs> of his love and devotion to his creation of Sonichu. 
<laughs> Crayola oh. Model Magic. In his now defense, Crayola Model Magic was a ton of fun. 2005, let's dive into the sagas. A saga is a term coined by Chrisologists to categorize story arcs and events yeah, it's in the Christian Weston Chandler fable. We would begin from the very start. Using it's Play-Doh that would dry in whatever you left it in, and so you could create stuff out of it. That's shrill. Let's turn that off. To Mar Summer 2005 to March 2008 Schroeder, is what that said. July 23rd, 1986, was a female friend of Christian whom he had the closest relationship of his life with. Chris and Megan met over a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! at a hobby store called The Game Place. Chris did not see her as a sweetheart at the time, but that That's did not title. last for long. Chris and Megan had a genuine interest in each other, but after he started making inappropriate gestures and advances towards Megan, it went downhill. Megan asserted her asexuality to Chris to show him that she was not interested. But this all fell to deaf ears. This is the longest saga in Christory and is recognized as the one in Christory. <laughs> Dude, imagine creeping a girl out so much she has to lie about being asexual. While the event with Megan was still going on, a side story called the Adam Stackhouse Saga emerged in June of 2007. Christian entered a video game contest to win over Megan's heart. In the contest, you have to sing and rap a song from the video game Parappa the Rapper. This is Christian's entry. Hey, P Station. My name is Christian Chandler. I live in Brooksville, Virginia. I have a PSP. I like to rap. I play with the rapper. I go with you now. The only song I know is Master Onion, which I got from a demo I brought from my friend Megan. I have the Dude, this is a banger. Song. So give me the PSP. I rap the rapper. So I can give one to her. And then we can play together. The winner of the contest Spittin would bars. get Rapper the Rapper memorabilia along with a game console to play it on. Chris made it into the top 10 and only won a few things, mostly because not that many people entered the contest. But for some reason, he was enraged at the number one winner, Adam Stackhouse, resulting in threats and angry emails directed towards the content creators along with Adam. <laughs> Jesus. And that is how angry I am at Adam Stackhouse, at Peluski, Rudell, and Surya Butchwald. They should have been disqualified because they had music and more than one person in their Freakazoid videos. He killed people? No. If he did, that's news to me. This is 2007 to 2011. Or Ed, for short, is a website dedicated to finding people like Chris and documenting their life, mostly so the people who read the pages can ridicule and make fun of them. Around fall of 2007, Chris already had a Sonichu website up at the time. It was discovered by trolls who showed off Christian's art on an image board website called 4chan, all while mocking him in the process. And thus, an Ed page about Christian's life was erected. Soon after seeing the Ed page, Chris thought that the website was just misunderstanding him, <laughs> so he released a video explaining his life up to that point to try and start on a new leaf with the Ed creators. Anyway, it has also come to my attention that I have a lot of people who may have picked up on the wrong theories of my person. I will not quote any hate sites, but I would like to humbly apologize for appearing to be some kind of sleaze, troll, badass, or whatever adjective <laughs> a badass, yeah. good or explicit you may feel about me. Please understand, I am a 25-year-old high-functioning autistic male with a simple peaceful dream of peaceful becoming dream. a father of a sweet little pretty girl who I will dub the name Crystal Weston Chandler. Crystal. A name that sounds similar to mine, but it has a nice ring to it. Oh yes, are those people who are watching this right now, you should just take them down, please. I'm asking, as an innocent victim of misunderstanding, just take down your web pages or add them to positively 
better reflect my feelings as an individual, as a person. Oh, I don't think this is going to work. Thank you very much for, for your time and listening. And please remember, I'm an innocent person. In the wake of the Ed Page, people wanting to mock Sonichu made inappropriate fan art of his characters depicting them as either transgendered or homosexual. Jesus Christ! This enraged Chris, so he retaliated by releasing five true and honest lewd pictures of his characters <laughs> onto the Ed Page. It was an attempt to counteract claims of transsexualism in the comics. Obviously, this did work. Imagine, imagine the guy. I just, I'm just imagining the guy making this video, having to blur out all of this. Oh, that's funny. He's sitting there having to make this video. That doesn't make the cut. This doesn't. This did drawn dick doesn't make the cut. For countless attempts to try and edit the Ed page in his favor, or just downright delete it, Chris released a video showing his anger and rage towards Ed. Citizens of the internet. I have a whole bunch of people on the internet. Give me hate. Show me a lot of hate. And I do not appreciate it. You're laughing at somebody else's pain and torture because I am lonesome, still trying to find a boyfriend free girl and to make it to a sweetheart. Y'all think a boyfriend free I'm just girl. a sap, a chump, dumbass, whatever you may think. But you know what? You. You. Every last one of you who has expressed hate against me, you're the shitheads. I am not. I'm straight. I'm straight. Ooh, Frank Ocean. You're we got a founder. Thank you for Every popping last in, buddy. one of you. Lay way on your consciousness throughout your eternal life that you are torturing and worse off tearing the heart and soul and emotions of the innocent man the out the innocent still 26 year old no this guy's not doing virgin. a bit at all not only that but i have so many lonely nights and stress that you cannot just imagine it this guy's famous for doing all the shit we're and watching right every now every other forum internet document literally drawn pictures with Dicks. <laughs> I love dykes. Dykes. China. I'm straight. If I ever, if I see a dick, I just look <laughs> away with a moment of being freaked out. What's he talking about now? You broke up the best friendship, the best relationship, the closest I could ever have in this pitiful adult life. Encyclopedia Dramatica has been a stigma attached to Christian's life ever since. It is a thorn Jada. in his side that he must bring up to anyone new introduced into his life. Yeah, I don't know what China had to do with any of that. You did it! Every last one of you! If I could blame myself, I would definitely blame myself for drawing those five pictures. Those five drawings! And by the way, that is not Crystal whose eyes are censored, that is Megan! Later on in this video, Chris reveals that in the picture he drew to retaliate against Encyclopedia Dramatica was actually Megan and not Crystal. Crystal is an imaginary sister which Christian draws in the Sonichu comics. He revealed that the photo was of Megan because of allegations of incest relating to Crystal. This is known as one of Christian's most shameful moments that could have been prevented. Megan has disconnected herself from Chris completely and refuses to even Thank you, Romus. His Appreciate own the sub, man. Nowadays. Meanwhile, at this time, Chris gets banned from the game place for yelling at a few kids over a card game. He is also banned from his local church because the pastor found out about his Ed Page and his infamous internet fame. Blanca is a group of trolls that pretended to be a sweetheart for Chris to fall in love with. Oh lord. Chris believed it completely. Blanca is real. I talked to her. Yeah, she called oh, me. Oh, that's sad. The trolls had a combined effort of doing whatever they could to disrupt and bully Christian. 
After a lot of work and talking with Chris, Blanca managed to get hold of the Sonichu medallion, along with embarrassing photos of Chris, which are paraded <laughs> around on the Ed page, including the infamous nude photos of his remarkably bent genitals. Once the medallions were in the possession of the trolls, what they the went fuck? out of their way to destroy it in any creative way possible. No, don't destroy Sonichu! <laughs> Dude, this is way better than the Epstein documentary. I should have led with this. But what? Why is he doing this? No, not the Sonichu medallion. Yeah, he wasted all those pickles. Jesus Christ! <laughs> what is wrong with him? Well, I guess we I guess we know what's wrong with him. We're only at 2008. Star date, October 21st, 2008. Well, it's done. Mm. Black and I, well, she broke up with me. In the midst of the Blanca saga, Chris was attacked by another troll under the name Jimmy Hill. He was tricked into believing that a man was selling Sonichu merchandise in Europe making large sums of money <laughs> life work. This made Chris upset, and he did everything in his power to make sure that it didn't happen. Master Jimmy Hill. Master Jimmy Hill. As you all may know about him, he has perpetrated, uh, my, or he has perpetrated the uh, rights of rights of science you for myself as you all well know for the longest time now that I am the original owner and creator of science you Jimmy convinced Chris using photoshopped images, all while making subtle changes to Sonic you himself <laughs> and turning him into the negative of Christian views. <laughs> oh that's too fucking funny steal Sonichu. <laughs> the electric. No, oh, that's good. Mm, string on a clod cat. I will buy his lights out. If I ever meet that bastard in person. Clyde Cash is a troll who has spent a good amount of time messing with Christian. It started during the Jimmy Hill saga and has continually gone on since 2008 all the way up to 2012, and some even say that it may still be happening. Chris considers Clyde his arch enemy for having a part in almost all bad things his arch enemy. to him. We will talk more about Clyde in future sagas because he manages to pop up in more than one. While Chris was still involved with Blanca, Panda Halo was sending him messages, and they talked for a little bit. But once Chris realized Blanca was a troll, he had to move on to a new sweetheart, and Panda Halo was chosen. On September 24, 2008, Chris announces true and honest love for Panda with a Sonichu drawing. Panda really pushed the limits of what was acceptable for Chris. Panda Halo would constantly insult Chris, he didn't seem to mind, and probably saw it as just playfulness. This proving how desperate he was at the time. Soon Clyde Cash and Panda Halo teamed up and announced to <laughs> Chris that Clyde had raped Panda Halo. 
For whatever reason, this barely phased Chris. Soon after, Clyde and Panda realized that they couldn't get any more reactions off Chris, so Panda supposedly died in a brush fire to end the saga. There's been some fire going, there's been some brush fire or wildfire, that sort of stuff. Fire going on in the southern Australia area where my sweetheart, Sarah Cassandra McKenzie, Panda Halo. <clears throat> <laughs> she was uh, in that. She was in that neck of the woods, and I haven't heard from her in like uh, over two weeks. And the fire's been going on for like uh, past during the past few weeks. So I pray that she's oh, still alive. Yeah. On Ryu, thank you for the three bucks. Watch Count Dankula's video on Dragon Lord, a German YouTuber who doxed himself with some not so great. Okay, I'll. I know who Count Dankula is, but I don't- I've never watched any of his content. He's the guy who trained his dog to Sig Heil. Thank you, I'm Champ. This dude fucks, he absolutely does. He absolutely fucks. To be gay, and that's the choice of the way. Not long after, Chris was approached by Clyde Cash pretending to be a web designer for Nintendo, asking to help design the Sonichi website. Proving how gullible Chris can be, he handed over all the information of the website to the alleged designer. Clyde acted immediately and held the Sonichi website for ransom, forcing Chris to make a video proclaiming he was gay to get it back. But once he got the site back, Chris made a short video proclaiming his straightness. For whatever reason, Chris has a weird hate for gays and has a fear of becoming gay himself. I, Chris and Chandler, am straight. Is that Don't a picture of like it. Xena the Warrior Not long Princess? After, Chris was talking to Clyde Cash yet again, pretending to be Shigeru Miyamoto, the CEO of Nintendo. Chris believed it. I like this picture of Xena in her little bikini. I'm straight. The Animal Crossing. Actual villagers. Come into your town, February 24th, 2009, my 27th birthday. So, uh, yeah. This went on for a little bit, but it ended after no funny videos were looted from Chris. The only thing to emerge were videos of Chris talking about Sonichu, and at the very end, a slideshow he made for Miyamoto talking way more about his life than Sonichu himself. Hmm. Hello, for, hello there, business people. Welcome to the world of Quickville, Virginia, and the world of Sonichu and Rose Chew. My name is Christian Weston Chandler of Ruckersville, Virginia, 14 Bashland Court, zip code 22968. And uh, my <laughs> phone number that? is 434-990-7198, my cell phone being 7600848. <laughs> Why would he do that? Under the alias Blue Spike, or as Chris knows him, Julie, Blue Spike would end up getting the worst videos out of Chris to date. Thank you, Owen Kelly. Julie or thank you, really Greg VDV, for the two gifted subs. In a Appreciate bad it, buddy. Big voice dick move. That Chris managed to fall for. After odd demands from Julie, Chris would label Billy Mays, of all people, the man who does the OxyClean commercials, as the mayor of CWCville, or Quickville. Chris would also produce the infamous Blow Up Doll video, which has been viewed by millions of people. Of course, I can't show you it, so here is a artistic representation. Julie, 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 Julie. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I came back now. What, I wonder what happened there. Uh, but this is. Should we talk with the fans for like five minutes, and then I'll tell you, please. Uh, I'm Actually, sure. Yeah, no. you can go look yeah, at that video. I, I don't want to see it. Okay. This whole time, Chris. You've been having sex with a 13 year old boy, you sick f What? Yeah, I'm a 13 year old boy, Chris, and you've been having sex with me this entire time. I'm gonna give all your f data to Chris Hansen, you fing pedal fork. So you better get the f out now before I Ugh. report you to the f feds. Get out. Ugh. Jesus Christ. That, that took a, a quick Ivy turn. Was Chris's newest sweetheart after Julie, he and Ivy shared many phone calls together and also produced some of the creepiest videos from Chris that have not been surpassed for quite some time. Hey Ivy, I'm doing this video for you. Oh, we are going to have so much fun together when you and I are together. Hmm. 
you know. Yeah, the kid is a cunt on that one, I, no doubt. My, my family and I will come and meet you at the airport. Very uncool you know to do to this so poor take gentleman. You to your hotel or uh, bring you back to my house. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, we'd be hanging around so much and sharing so many fondful memories. Mm. And, you know, we can enjoy a movie in the theater or at home or. Watch a television No, he didn't touch a kid. The kid over the internet, like, catfished him, is what it was. We run. <laughs> Family guy. <laughs> Family guy. Or, uh, I love Lucy, or I got some, I got the entire series of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> and, you know, I look, you know, I look forward to the eventuality of, uh, you and me having our sex time together. <laughs> I'll do you so many, I'll, I'll do my best to pleasure you and keep you satisfied. Miss Fizz Divey, just for you. Just if ONA did you. a bit on this, that's mm. pro that's in the 0.5% of ONA of I haven't seen, so I need to look that up, because I bet it's funny. Mm. After interference with Christian's parents, that surprises me. Are you sure? Suicide. I've seen pretty much fucking everything from ONA. Chris did not have much of a response, because he found out soon after the suicide announcement that Ivy was a troll, but tears were still shed that day. Liquid Chris Saga. <sighs> Captain's Log, start date, June 21st, 2009. <sighs> My name is Christian Weston Chandler, and y'all y'all already know me of the cre as a creator of the Sanchu franchise and comic. <laughs> what an asshole this and, kid is! <laughs> uh, the uh, the Rose Chu comic. Uh, as well. Hmm. The Liquid Saga is something most would agree to be the most fun one, and not just another attempt to ruin Ooh, Christian's life. Most fun! Although it was still at the expense of Chris, like most of the sagas, the number one most memorable thing to emerge that was, was actually Liquid that's Chris, Chris Chan, a man really? pretending to be Christian. Oh yeah, that's not him. Down to it's him pretending. Detail emerged, sporting a Sonichu medallion made out of paper and a striped polo shirt. Chris soon replied in anger, not because someone was mocking him in his mannerisms, but because he saw it as someone stealing his own identity. No, this isn't him. Chris eventually came to the conclusion that the imitator was known as Ian Brandon Anderson, but many call him Liquid Chris, and the real Christian Weston Chandler, Solid Chris. Liquid and Solid had Solid many Chris. showdowns to prove who was the better Christian Weston Chandler, while all battling over Christian's new and honest sweetheart, Casey. Thank you, Moday, for the buck. Today was a good day. Bought yourself something nice after a lot of hard work, so go buy myself something nice. Well, I won't spend that buck all in one place. <laughs> Draw. Oh, the music showdown. He's not a very good singer. This asshole put pillows in his shirt. <laughs> yeah, and it's a guitar hero. <laughs> guitar. Hear you say, I have a boyfriend. Tell me why I don't I gather with a Yeah, this 
guy's making fun of the real Chris Chan. Get all the pretty girls, yeah. You may not know this, but I want you to know that I am a lonesome heart without a fire. But a his drawing style is just disturbing. <sighs> Serial killerish. I, I hope y'all enjoyed that. CWC In June of 2009, I don't know what that means. Chris was given the CWC Apedia, a website he could use to upload his Sonichu comics, web blogs, and personal info. It was a safe haven from trolls because usually when Chris would start up a website, it would instantly be hacked and vandalized. But of course, the trolls found a way to get at Chris. Mostly buying ad space on the website that included things that Chris hated. A lot of them were homosexual in nature, <laughs> and Chris is a weird hate for gays, like we mentioned. Along with ads about Asperger's, which is something that enrages Chris, because he thinks people with Asperger's steal the spotlight from him. He would soon release videos of him screaming death threats at the camera to trolls defacing his website. Aspertu. Oh my god. He's a hero who's heroic. He's unrecognized. So all of the trolls attacking quick go down to their demise. In November, an artist named Alec Benson Leary would emerge, starting a new comic book parody of Sonic Chew called Aspertu. Most of the comics were made just to make fun of Chris and his shenanigans. <laughs> Sonic Chew at the time was taking a downward spiral and slowly got worse and worse, so a lot of the fans switched over to Aspertu. At first, Aspertu was made to mock Chris, but over time it turned into its own cult following, with fans lining up for the next comic to come out. Jesus Christ. Anyway, his character not only is a parody and, and, and vulgar fanfiction of my Sonichu character, but he plays off of my past Buddha belly and my masculine bosoms. My bosoms. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ruin you, Larry. <laughs> My bosoms. Hey, hey, little cuz. Uh... Or, uh, hey, Chris Tito! Less than Chandler, if you prefer. It's, uh, it's me, uh, Tito, or, uh, or Don. Um, listen, man, I, I got some sand in the potato salad this time. You caught me, cuz I, I admit it. I sold one over your little cousins. Security files of Sony to the hackers. Surfshack Tito is a hacker that came out of the shadows and hacked <laughs> Christian's PSN Tito. accounts numerous times, making him do things to get it back. Thank For you, whatever Monday. reason, Not Tito's Monday, spoken mannerisms bad. as the same Surfshack Tito from the Nickelodeon TV show, Rocket Power. Rocket Power, pretty good show. Tito, pretty good show. You stay away from Heather, you son of a bitch. You have no right taking her from me like that, you womanizing rapist. <laughs> and if you go near her again, and I will find you. I will find you. I will cut you up. I will beat you up. I will knock you on your backside, stand on your gut like a log roller, and roll your fat right through your skull. Rolling it wide open. Because that's what you deserve, you goddamn womanizing, raping, trolling, stupid, pickle-suited nigger. <laughs> and don't you ever, don't you dare contact me in my email again, or contact me ever. You stay away from me. You stay away from me, content. <laughs> Don't call me. I will find you. <laughs> Dropping hard R's. I, I was not expecting him to take that direction. <laughs> For quite some time, a storm was brewing. While all these sagas were going on, tension at the game place slowly rose and rose. After Chris being banned from the game place for a lot of little incidents of just being an all-around thorn in the side of Michael Schneider, the owner of the game place, he would get permanently banned. Time after time, Chris returned to the stores with pleas to get unbanned. He then went on to try YouTube, emails, and even sneaking in. His first attempt was, he went into the store trying to give Michael a long-winded speech, but it ultimately failed, and Chris ended up storming out of the store calling Michael a Jew. <laughs> I hope 
that God will forgive you for being so heartless and cruel, Michael Snyder. Thank you. Give. A few days later, Chris attempted to get a picture of Michael to pin on a dartboard, or so Chris claims. Michael says that Chris was taking pictures of his daughter. Whether this is true or not is still up for debate. However, on October of 2011, Chris entered the game place, probably asking to be on banned. Not much is known, but charges of assault on a law enforcement individual and property damage ranging upwards of $1,000. Jesus. Chris was sentenced to community service, one year probation, and mandatory psychiatric treatment and evaluation. They were forced to pay for Michael's medical bills. After the events with Michael Schneider, a woman named Rocky Shoemaker would convince Chris to give up his internet life and move on past all the trolls. Rocky is a pastor that has given Chris advice for many years. It was truly a chance for Chris to give it all up and go outside and enjoy the world. After almost three decades of Chris doing the opposite of this, many would say <laughs> it wasn't possible. But Chris surprisingly would get rid of his PS3, arguably his most valuable possession. His love for the console is undying. The rest of my loneliness within the past three years and anguish. I bid you fun, fair do. Adieu. <laughs> I bid you fair do. Adieu. Why didn't he sell it? That's your question? Look at the rest of this guy's behavior. Why don't you think he sold it? Seems like a bit of a kook. Ugh. They saw a head on the metal parts in the heavy plastic. But still, when I hook it, still when I plugged it in, it did not. No, turn he's not on. doing a bit. Actually, it went into standby mode, but that's all as far as it went. That's all as it went. So right now I'm gonna finish the job. Yeah, punch that PS4 motherboard into submission. Once Chris said goodbye to the internet, he was spotted at many public places around the Ruckersville area. What was that? He's wearing a tube top? I mean, he was just dancing, having fun there. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, Jackie. <laughs> Mountain Dew me. I'm doing this video for you. I've got up the media fire. But yeah. I'll just, yeah, I could be like. But it was dark times for Christian. He eventually found a new sweetheart online. PS3 or not, Christian was <laughs> back in action. This time, her name was Jackie. Oddly enough, instead of trying to ruin Christian's life, Jackie was actually trying to help Chris, encouraging him and demanding things like cleaning this his house like and doing more photo. productive things. But he proved to be lazy, all around creepy, and would just constantly beg for sex. Jackie realized that Chris was incapable Thank you, Brian. of helping. I appreciate this point it, buddy. And left Christian. The Tom Girl saga was a breaking point for Chris. Three more until no we have a leap number of subs. Man job with a funny way of talking and acting. His mental state soon withered as leaked images of his cross-dressing surface. He went on forums coming out as a cross-dresser who was still interested in women, or so he claims. Time went by, Chris realized he was the cause of his own internet drama and just disappeared for a few years. Although he did not completely disappear. News surfaced that his father Bob Chandler died of a heart attack, so even the trolls decided to stop bothering Chris as things weren't that the way they That poor dad, I hope they had other kids. After a few months of silence and things about Chris slowly faded, tragedy strikes yet again. Green County investigators are looking into the cause of a house fire early this morning. It started at about 3 o'clock this morning at a home on Branchland Court. That's in the southern part of the county. We're told the fire started in a first floor bathroom, but got quickly out of control and eventually shot through the roof. Everybody inside was able to get out safely, but one firefighter suffered minor injuries. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. On January 10th, 2014, every single piece of art Chris has made was ruined in the fire. It is unknown if his Sonichu comics survived and the many relics he held so dear to his heart. It's a goddamn shame. They stayed into a rental home until moving back into the house once renovations were completed. 
People thought this was the end of everything, and Christian would either end up doing something terrible or take the opportunity that has been presented to him and start his life over. But Chris proved to the world that he could not learn from his mistakes. Don't call anybody. See, did you see that? He just maced that person. Thank you, Buddha Strike, for the gift. After causing a Thank lot you, of Frank Ocean, for three gifts. Really appreciate it. Well done, Big Dick Buddies. Time, Chris went to his local Rutgersville GameStop and vandalized all of the Sonic Boom merchandise and pepper sprayed an employee. Christian's reason to protest was to get across the point that Sonic's arms are not blue. This showed how much of a child Chris still was, or it opened the curtains of his current state of his mental health. Now that you know the basic outline of Christian's story, what have you learned? Have I swayed you towards a certain view about Chris, or have I just presented facts and let you make up your own opinion? Thank you, Tempo. If you want me to show you the bad side of Christian, I Mountain can. Doomy. If you want me to show you the bad side of the trolls, I can. Right. That being said, there is no good or bad side in this fight of Troll versus Chandler. You can defend whomever you want, but the truth is, the whole aurora of negativity that surrounds Chris is a bad thing. It is a bad thing that people try to wreck his life at every turn, but it is just as bad for Chris himself to turn around and give it right back to the trolls. I bet he was and furious on the, the Sonic movie. Of the Good point. Of hate are the people that want to document Chris. I can't say if it's wrong to study someone and archive most of their life. Like I have said before, that is for you to decide. When people hear about someone like Chris, they don't get angry because he can be an autistic goofball who loves to jump around and get mad at the camera. Although I am sure there's a big part of that. They get angry because they feel cheated by society. Christian is an example of everything that could have gone wrong with a modern day child, and he has managed to get away with it. Chris has refused to grow up and live like a normal person, blaming every problem either on trolls or his autism. On the other hand, Chris is still a victim. He's a victim of a fight that has gone on since the Industrial Revolution. Chris on one side what? being a group that thinks life is too hard, so they should rely on the sweat of others' work and mope around all day doing nothing productive. On the other spectrum, there's the people that believe you should work for what you have, and to use any government needs programs would just be a symbol of submitting to laziness. These are usually the kind of people that hate Christian. To give you an idea of how much effort has been put into documenting Christian's life, here's some statistics. There's a Wikipedia dedicated to Christian, with over 1,465 articles, over wow. 18,640 pages insane. about Chris himself, 7,072 uploaded files including videos, pictures, and audio logs. Over 68,581,864 views to the wiki and counting. And that's not the end of it. Wow. This doesn't include the Incompedia Dramatica page, wow. which has over 1,064,840 views to the article alone. The official Christian Weston Chandler YouTube archive that is made by trolls has over 17,514 subscribers, with 16,155,141 views to the videos themselves. And that's not counting the views he would get to his actual YouTube account. This is just a YouTube channel that has archived his videos. Kristen Weston Chandler it's is beyond a phenomenon. YouTube layout. He is truly a wonder that like has that. managed to grace over from just being a victim to an art form. If you go on DeviantArt and type in Kristen Weston Chandler, 1,120 pieces of art made by fans along with 5,107 entries dedicated to Sonichu alone. His pictures and videos have appeared in Shoujo Beat, Nintendo Power, Houston Press, numerous times in his local news. In radio, his antics have been talked about on Opie and Anthony, Toucher and Rich, The Kevin and Bean Show. He has been on Failosophy, Web Soup. On internet media, he has been reviewed by Larry Bundy Jr., an internet comedian. No, 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 no. I'm still the mayor quick deal. There is no election. Linkara, a YouTube comic reviewer, talks about him. But wait, the internet cried back. Let me tell you about the horror that is called Sonic Chew. <laughs> he was on Ray William Johnson. He is constantly spotted in Harry Partridge's animations. Just, Get him I on the really show. That would be hilarious. I, I check the is um, Sonichu.com, which is kind of the the wiki about Chris Chan and his weird life. <laughs> we do like, too. Yeah, I check it like if not daily, every couple of hours. <laughs> And speaking of animation, did you know there's a cartoon dedicated to his misadventures? An entire cartoon series. That's not very flattering. Every single episode is over five minutes long, and there's about 15 of these.
Mr. Chandler is the mayor of Quickville. He's got a lot of things to do. Got a lot of China to steal. Mary Lee Walsh is always waiting to ruin his fun. With the chaotic combo at his side, the day is already won. Well done to Quickville. We invite you to swallow some sperm. Chris is straight, we guarantee. This is insane. Unless your boyfriend free, he doesn't like the blackie. God says gay should die. And if you see him sitting at a table, well, you better read his sign. Yeah, that's pretty trippy. People have spent almost a decade discussing Chris and his life, studying him as if he was Jeffrey Dahmer. His stories are nowhere near as epic and enduring as something like the Bible, but the way people build him up to be this epic and Forrest Gump-like is something to behold. It's something to remember for a long time. When I'm a lot older, I know I will tell my children the story about Chris, but not just Chris himself. I will tell the story about what people have done with Sonichu and the world in Christian's mind. I will tell them about how so many people put thousands of hours of work to make content and input about an autistic man-child. I will tell them about the trolls, and I will tell them about the people that have tried to Why would to you tell your Chris. children about this? And I will this. most importantly, tell them how they can better themselves to not end up like Christian. This is a tragedy that could have been prevented, and to blame Chris or the trolls is trivial. The blame lands on everyone here. Taking the time to mess with someone is bad, and the same goes for trying to get back at them. There is nothing left we can do for him. Chris is a traitor. You just made a whole documentary about it, bitch. If we end up ignoring him, he will do something bad for attention. If we try and help him, he will push the help away. As I see this train go by, there is nothing left to do but watch it crash. The juxtaposition of this nonsense with classical music, I like that. That's pretty funny. Historian. Yeah, I don't know what problem you might be, you might be having, Huberu. Yeah, maybe just refresh. It's playing fine for me and everybody else. No, he never learned a lesson to stay away from the internet, I think, is the thing. Yes, high high IQ move. All right. Woo! KCY Pre 01, thank, so big big move, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs. Big dick move, thank you so much. February 24th, 2007. I am Christopher Christian Weston Chandler. Leave long and shine on in your very own unique way. War is never the answer. Peace is. Never fight. Right. Compliments will get you fuzzy wuzzies. War gets you Salute prickly wickly. Salute to wickly. you, Chris. As well as punches, they get you those too. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. Alright. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. That was hilarious. That was a good one. A solid one. A real good one. So, yeah, I had some other stuff pulled up here. I, I always hear people being like, look into the dark side Phil thing. I don't know anything about this guy for the most part, so who knows. I do know I want to watch this at some point. The Stanford Prison Experiment. Seems like it'd be really interesting. Seems like that would be fun. Alright! It should put me up to my goal. Yep, I'm... 1349, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you, KCY Pret. Much appreciated. Yeah, I don't think that was all faked. I don't think it was all faked. Can we keep watching vids? We can keep watching some stuff. Uh, and then maybe I'll bounce over to Bully in a little bit. I'm going to run and take a pee real quick. Right. You know, I've never tried actually playing an ad. Let me see how this works. 
STD boss, thank you. Let me, I'm gonna run and pee. And you know what? I haven't had a beer in like a month, so I think I'm gonna see if I have one and grab one. That sounds nice. All right. 